This meeting is now called to order. I'd like to welcome everyone this evening. And for roll call, Deputy Mayor Andrews has sent her regrets. We'll now take a moment of reflection and respect, please. Thank you. Confirmation of the agenda. That council adopts the agenda for the meeting of March 16th, 2022 by adding the following item after the item 8.2, and that is Manager of Planning and Development Report Plan 0922, Planning Report Exemption from Draft Plan Approval for Condominium 85 Forest Street. Okay, someone to move and someone to second. Uh, Councillor Chapman and Councillor Charlton, are there any questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? And that's carried. Are there any declarations of pecuniary interest? Okay, seeing none, delegations and public meetings. And we do have a public meeting this evening and it's in regards to report plan 0622. So we'll need a resolution to commence the public meeting. That council do now commence a public meeting at 7.01 p.m. to receive input from the public with respect to the report plan 622, planning evaluation report, application for zoning bylaw amendment 122, and that's respecting 192 Sydenham Street West, Blatts. Okay, someone to move and someone to second. Councillor Barber and Councillor Ham, are there any questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? And that's carried. <clears throat> this public meeting is taking place under the Planning Act 1990 as amended. At this virtual public meeting, council will hear public representations regarding an application for zoning bylaw amendment for 196 Sydenham Street West, detailed in staff report plan 0-22. Please note that those who do not provide comment or written submission prior to the decision of the appropriate authority may not be afforded the right to appeal to the Ontario Land Tribunal. Council will hear comments in the following order. The Manager of Planning and Development who will be presenting the staff report, the applicant or agent, members of the public, staff follow-up and question and answer time. Can the Manager of Planning and Development please provide your report? And welcome, Christy. Good evening, Your Worship, and through you. The application for the zoning bylaw amendment before Council this evening proposes a zone change for the property at 196 Sydenham Street West. The applicant is proposing to rezone the property from residential type 2 R2 zone to residential type 3 special provision R3-9 zone to recognize the existing multiple unit converted dwelling and to permit an additional residential unit to be located in a detached accessory building. This application was circulated in accordance with the provisions of the Planning Act. Since the writing, uh, since the time the report was published, comments were received from town operations staff indicating uh, there may be concerns with parking on site and access to the site uh, and its ability to accommodate the proposed use. Um, from these comments, I can advise the mini minimum parking requirements of the zoning bylaw are being met and the applicant is willing to better delineate individual parking spaces on site to assist with better site organization. Further, staff received written correspondence from a neighboring landowner. The letter was included in the agenda package this evening uh, for Council's review and consideration. This letter outlines concerns again with on-site parking and off-site impacts related to traffic and noise. Um, and the primary, uh, primary concern is associated with the multiple residential use on the property. This information has been shared with the applicant and the applicant is willing to construct a wooden privacy fence along the southerly, southerly property line. So staff have reviewed this application, giving consideration to the Planning Act, the Provincial Policy Statement, the Town and County Official Plans. These lands are located in the medium density land use designation of the Town's Official Plan where development of more dense multi-unit residential uses are permitted and encouraged. Um, it's also important to note that the proposal to add one additional residential unit alongside an existing multi-unit converted dwelling is not specifically contemplated within the town zoning bylaw. 
So the regulations that we put in place last fall to permit additional residential units um, reflects what is prescribed within the Planning Act. And those represent the minimum land use permissions required. Um, this, however, does not preclude or limit the viability of incorporating additional residential units in other scenarios. And that is what's being proposed here. Um, this is why the request to amend the zoning um, in order to facilitate this additional residential unit in addition to an existing converted dwelling with three units is in front of council this evening. So as detailed in the report, I'm satisfied that the application for the zoning bylaw amendment to recognize the existing converted dwelling and to permit an additional residential use on the property at 196 Sydenham Street West um, is, is consistent with the provincial policy statement, conforms to the official plan policy direction and represents sound, lose, sound land use planning. Um, it's appropriate and desirable in this location um, and following um, comments, I, I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you, Christy. Um, Josh, can you uh, let me know if the applicant or agent is here this evening? Uh, through you, uh, Mayor French, no, they are not. Okay, thank you. Um, members of the public, uh, did you receive any further comments or letters or anything, Josh, in regard to this? Through you, Mayor French, uh, the only comments that were received with respect to the application before us uh, were appended to the report and uh, are included as at attachment two. That was everything received. Okay, thank you, Josh. Now I'll turn it over to Council. Do you have any questions for Christy? Councillor Barber, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, to Christy, uh, this is another application that. Uh, checks all the uh, the boxes for approval and uh, council would be in an awkward position if they uh, uh, chose to not support it. But it is frustrating um, when um, policies are uh, downloaded from the, uh, the province uh, and they have a direct impact in, in neighborhoods and they do change the character. Well, we're not supposed to look at the character as being a deciding factor, but uh, it's hard to rationalize that with the uh, the people that are being directly affected. Um, I, I know it has, those comments have no bearing on the uh, on the right of the applicant to uh, uh, proceed with this application. It's just frustrating because we're getting hit from both sides. Thank you for that. Okay, Councillor Charlton and then Councillor Oslatch. Go ahead, Councillor Charlton. Uh, through your worship, I would agree with Councillor Barber. Uh, there seems to be no consideration um, uh, to the neighborhood and it, it changes the neighborhood. Um, everything's in place for this to happen, but there's, there's not any consideration to the neighborhood and that frustrates me. Um, it, it could be affordable housing and we need affordable housing could be affordable housing the first time around. And then when that tenant moves out, um, rent can no longer be affordable. Um, and that's a concern as well, but maybe it's not affordable housing either. Um, anyway, I, I just have a, have a concern. I, I, I did talk to the, uh, to the landowner uh, to the south of that property and, uh, and we had a great conversation and and um, there, yeah, there doesn't seem to be a lot of concern for the neighborhood. People are checking all the boxes, but they got no skin in the game. So uh, I find it frustrating. Thank you. Councillor Oslatch, go ahead. Uh, yes, Your Worship. Uh, I have concerns with this also. Uh, I'm Councillor, Councillor uh, Barber and Councillor uh, um, Tom. <laughs> anyway, uh, I have, that's a busy, busy, busy corner with the liquor store there and uh, and the McDonald's there. And it's, he's co converting a garage to a living uh, a rental property. I don't understand this. I would like to abstain from voting on this. Uh, Christy, did you have something to add? Uh, through your worship, if I may just provide some clarification on uh, some of the comments that have been provided. Go ahead, is, Christy. Is that acceptable? Certainly. Okay, thank you. 
uh, through you, Madam Chair, and uh, two members of Council. Uh, I certainly appreciate the comments that are being made. Uh, but as we're going to discuss later in our training session this evening, I think it's important to uh, remember that the public interest uh, is comprised of more than just the public opinions. Um, my job as the professional planner is to represent unrepresented voices at the table. So that could mean uh, other members of our community, uh, long-term sustainability of our community, um, talking about uh, you know natural heritage, not necessarily in this case, uh, cultural impacts. Um, so just because there's a perceived impact um, of the surrounding neighborhood, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's not in the public interest. And again, um, we have policy direction in place um, that you know permits us to consider alternative forms of housing. It may not be an affordable housing situation, but it does enhance housing affordability by offering a range of types and sizes. Um, with respect to it being located in a garage, um, it's not going to be a garage. It's going to be fully converted under the conditions of the Ontario Building Code. That's the only way it would be permitted, and that is consistent with the regulatory framework that this council put in place last year. Um, so I, I appreciate the concerns, and we do solicit impact, uh, or sorry, um, comments from the public. However, those comments have to be based in, in land use planning um, rationale. So yes, we are considering character, um, certainly, but we're also looking at the underlying land use designation. These lands are designated for medium density land uses. So that means that they're intended um, to be more densely used or more intensely used um, due to their proximity to the core. Um, you know, they're, they're in close walking distance. Um, typically, these higher density uses are concentrated um, in close to amenities. Um, so it, it's, it's contrary, um, in my opinion, um, to, you know, it'd be a detriment to this landowner to not be able to use his um, property for what it's intended for because of what's going on around him. So um, if there are concerns about, about traffic, we can certainly um, you know, defer the application and have a, a greater look at that. But I don't think um, that if we were proposing a, a four unit converted dwelling or a, a quadruplex here, um, we would be having the same conversation. Um, so I, I would just encourage council to look at this um, from a, you know, a community lens, um, appreciating that this particular applicant has um, committed to doing a number of things to help lessen the perceived impact on the neighborhood. Um, and he is looking to um, you know, increase and introduce uh, another form of quality housing into our community. Thank you. Thank you, Christy. Are there any further questions or comments? Councillor Chapman, go ahead. Sure, you, your worship, to Christy. Um, so they have agreed to put this fence in. My question is, is there, um, is there anything in place as to a timeline of when this fence will be installed? Is, is there something that, um, guarantees that the fence will be put in? Go ahead, Christy. Uh, through you, your worship, to Councillor Chapman. Thank you for that question. Um, because we can't apply a condition to the zoning bylaw, um, we, we have you know commitment from the landowner. If there, this was an element where site plan control was being required, um, so if the, the multi-unit uh, dwelling was being expanded, we could certainly apply site plan control. Um, but because we're really focusing on that additional residential unit, um, it is exempt from site plan control. Um, and that's um, per our policy direction, per legislative direction. Um, and he's doing these, uh, he's committed to doing this in good faith. So um, I, he is, you know, wanting to be a good neighbor. Um, I, I think that what is being proposed um, is, is reasonable. Um, I think, you know, delineating the parking space so there's a little bit more organization on site, uh, consolidating the access, um, and then adding that uh, visual barrier um, are, are all positive um, that we can't necessarily require him to do, um, but he is appreciating that they, the, what he's committed to doing um, will help, um, you know, lessen those perceived impacts on the surrounding neighborhood. Okay, thank you, Christy. Are there any further comments or questions? Uh, Councillor Oslach. Uh, yes, Your Worship. I still like to decline on voting on this issue. So are you suggesting you just want to abstain or are you suggesting that we defer this? No, I was suggesting I was 
like to abstain. Okay, thank you, Councillor Oslatch. Are there any further comments? Uh, Councillor Charlton. So can we have a recorded vote on this, please? Certainly. Are there any other questions before we move to the recorded vote? Seeing none, uh, Josh, uh, could you get that ready for us, please? Certainly, uh, through your worship, I'll I'll just prepare that right now. I just give me one moment. <clears throat> also, just um, through you, Madam Chair, we'll also need to adjourn the public meeting just before proceeding to the vote. Okay. Um, all right. I just wanted to give you the heads up that to yeah. get that prepared because I know that you know it takes a few minutes. So um, at that, we'll first we'll we'll adjourn the meeting and then that'll give our clerk time to get that resolution ready and the voting ready. So uh, someone to move and someone to second that we will adjourn this meeting. Councillor Chapman and Councillor Oslatch, are there any questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? Okay, thank you, and that's carried. And I, are you ready now, Josh? Yeah, we're getting thank you feedback, for the heads up. Council. Um, I'm not sure, could everyone just uh, turn off their mics? I think we're getting some echoing, and that makes it hard for everyone to hear. Thank you. I'll go ahead, Josh. Have you got that prepared now for the vote? <clears throat> yes, so uh, thank you, Your Worship. Should we read the uh, resolution then again? Or, or well, I don't know if we've read it yet, but I mean, go over it again. Certainly, uh, through your worship. So we will need a uh, mover and seconder on this resolution, and I'll uh, I'll read it aloud. Resolution okay. is that report plan six twenty two entitled planning evaluation report application for zoning bylaw amendment one twenty two one ninety six Sydenham Street West Blatts be received for information, and that council conduct a public meeting on March sixteenth two thousand twenty two at approximately seven p.m. to receive comments regarding the application for zoning bylaw amendment one twenty two from the public and that the application for zoning bylaw amendment 122 related to the property, property located at 196 Sydenham Street West be approved for reasons set out in this report, and that council consider giving three readings to the bylaw 1022, being a bylaw to amend the zoning bylaw to rezone the subject property from residential type two, R2 zone to residential type three special provision, nine zone to recognize an existing multiple unit converted dwelling and to permit an additional residential unit in an accessory building. Okay, thank you, Josh. So someone to move and someone to second. Councillor Ham. And someone to second, uh, Councillor Oslatch. Okay, so we'll we'll now proceed with the recorded vote. Certainly, and uh, through your worship, just as a, uh, a just a point of clarification, um, so to abstain, it would just be a no vote, uh, just for clarity. Okay. Okay. Uh, so thank I'll start you. with. Uh, Councillor Charlton? No. Councillor Oslich? No. Councillor Barber? Yes. Councillor Chapman? You're on mute, Councillor Chapman. Sorry. Yes. Councillor Ham? Yes. Mayor French? Yes. So by a vote of four to two, the motion is carried. Okay, thank you, Josh. Okay, the next item up uh, is minutes to approve. That council approves the following minutes, regular virtual meeting of council held on March 2nd, 2022. Okay, someone to move and someone to second. Councillor Chapman and Councillor Ham. Are there any questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? And that's carried, thank you. Minutes to receive? That council receives the following minutes. Meeting of the Elgin County Council held on February 8th, 2022 and February 22nd, 2022. And meeting of the Elmer Police Services Board held on January the 11th, 2022. Okay, someone to move and someone to second. Councillor Chapman and Councillor Charlton, are there any questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? And that's carried. We'll move on to the consent agenda, items 7.1 to 7.6. 
Let item 7.1 to 7.6 of the March 16th, 2022 consent agenda be received for information with actions to be taken as noted. Okay, someone to move and someone to second. Councillor Ham and Councillor Barber, are there any questions or comments concerning the consent agenda? Okay, we've got lots of hands up. So we'll start with Councillor Oslatch, then Councillor Charlton, and then Councillor Chapman. Go ahead, Councillor Oslatch. Yes, Your Worship. Uh, consent agenda 7.3. I don't understand the implications of this uh, from the county. Um, basically, it's across the road from the Legion, the old home hardware store. And we never had a problem. Uh, and as long as I've been in Elmer with that parking situation, the side of line, a line of parking up coming out of Walnut Street, I don't understand the concern about the uh, the parking there because uh, they're renovating that building uh, on the corner and they really need parking. But I understand the situation from the county, basically. Maybe Andy could put us uh, more uh, enlightenment. enlightenment in. I can actually answer that because it came to county council. Um, so we're complaint driven there as well. So there were complaints sent into the county our staff went out and they checked and as you know that is a county road so it's their road and they discovered that there is a problem there and so that's why they brought it to council and it was approved at our last council meeting but it's never been a problem before in all the years i've, I've been in elmer <laughs> well i i can't speak to that i just know that our staff take all their uh, complaints very seriously at the county and they did go out and staff checked everything out and they believe there was a problem with that particular area. And so it was brought to council and it was approved. How many complaints? I would only suggest if you need more information to call the county and ask them. Okay, thank okay. you. You're, you're welcome. Sure. And Councillor Charlton, I believe you're next. Uh, through your worship, I was just pleased how the process worked. Uh, I know it's complaint driven and so a complaint was made and it was followed through and uh, it's just nice to see that that happen. So thank you. You're welcome. And Councillor Chapman, you're next. Um, just give me a second. It's um, item through you, your worship, yes. item 7.1. And I just want to say that it's um, it's nice to see that the Agriculture Society are going through with their activities, the, the tractor pull, and um, that, that we can start to return to, to some normal activities. So I just wanna congratulate them on, on their planning and being prepared to have this happen. And I couldn't agree with you more. It, it's great news, isn't it? Are there any further comments concerning the consent agenda? Councillor Barber. Uh, thank you, Worship. Uh, 7.3 again, uh, just my thoughts. Uh, yes, it is a county road, uh, and the county has uh, every right to uh, to make their, uh, their regulation. Where I uh, kind of disagree with their decision is that the uh, they chose to make the uh, no parking zone, no parking here at a corner type thing, 20 meters. That's the length of a school bus and a pickup truck and very close to being the length of a tractor trailer. Um, I couldn't find any other spot in town where no parking here at a corner regulation was in effect that encompassed 20 meters. Why wasn't it something like five meters, like the length of a regular car? Why did they have to go, um, in effect, three parking spaces? Now there's only two there and then there's a laneway and that 20 meters takes it to the center part of the laneway. I, I just think it's overkill. Yes, it's their roadway, but it's our town. And uh, I believe a more appropriate process would have been for the county to bring the concern to the uh, municipality and ask for our input and uh, see if there was a meeting of the minds. It just seems like it's way over and above what's uh, what's necessary. I know they've got the right and they're exercising the right, but it's just not um, appropriate in this particular case. Thank you. 
Well, Councillor Barber, maybe um, Andy could answer that because maybe our staff were advised of this. I don't know. Andy, would, would you please uh, let us know if you were contacted by the county? Sorry there, hitting <laughs> the two buttons at once. Um, I will have to check uh, through my email. I don't believe that, that I did hear from them, but I don't want to definitively uh, say that. And um, certainly I think there will be a lot of things um, with the county having done their transportation master plan. Uh, there will be a lot of things that we want to have discussions with them uh, on this, uh, on, on the road. Uh, through Elmer. So, um, you know, when we have those future discussions, I, I'm more than happy to raise this and say, is there any way that you could reduce the length of that? Uh, just as a way to keep it moving forward for Council. Okay, thank you, Andy. Uh, does that help out, Councillor Barber? It's a start, Your Worship. Okay. Councillor Oslach, go ahead. Uh, yes, Your Worship. Communication is paramount because the, the county should talk to the municipalities that they uh, impose their will on, on the municipalities. They should talk to them first. That's my opinion. Okay, thank you, Councillor Oslatch. Are there any further comments concerning the consent agenda? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor? And that's carried, thank you. We'll move into an action item. So the first report is plan 07-22. That report plan 07-22 entitled planning evaluation report, application for consent to sever number E20-22, 10 Spruce Street East, Dyke and Classen be received for information and that the application for consent to sever number E20-22 relating to the property located at lot 24 west side of Murray South side of Spruce plan 164 and known municipally as 10 Spruce Street East be supported in principle with the recommended conditions for reasons set out in this report and further that this report be forwarded to the land division committee for its review and consideration. Okay, thank you, Josh. Someone to move and someone to second. Councillor Chapman and Councillor Barber and I'll turn this over to you, Christy. Thank you, Your Worship and through you. Uh, the application for consent to sever before council this evening um, is proposing a residential lot creation uh, to create an infill lot uh, with frontage along Murray Street. This application has been scheduled to be heard by the uh, Land Division Committee on April 27th. So the proposed lot to be severed is actually the uh, portion of the lot with the existing single detached dwelling on it and the retained lot will be held by the landowner for future residential development. Um, the lot that is proposed to be severed um, is smaller than the requirements of the residential type uh, 1B zone being uh, 450 square meters. Um, they are proposing 358 square meters for that severed lot and 479 square meters uh, for the lot to be retained. Um, in order to facilitate the severance, a subsequent application for minor variance would be re required. Um, so notwithstanding this, um, which would be addressed through the conditions of consent, uh, staff and uh, well, I am recommending that council offer support and principle for this application uh, subject to the recommended conditions of approval. Um, so included within the conditions are our standard conditioner conditions, but I do want to note um, that this is the first application um, that falls under our parkland dedication bylaw passed earlier this year. Um, so that condition, in addition to uh, that the owner meet all requirements, financial and otherwise, have been included um, as recommended for, for this application. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Christy. Are there any questions for Christy? Councillor Oslatch, go ahead. Uh, yes, Your Worship, to Christy. I seem to, uh, seem to think that lots are getting smaller all the time in the town of Elmer. Is this basically the, the case? Go ahead, Christy. If I may, through you, uh, Your Worship, to Councillor Oslatch. Uh, thank you for that question. Um, I, I think I've noted previously that we are working with a zoning bylaw that, that is quite old and does reflect some historic development patterns. Um, it is quite typical in a more modern and updated zoning bylaws that there be a range of lot sizes. Um, so I do think it, it's going to be typical for us to see these types of variances um, until such time that we're able to undertake an official plan review 
and a subsequent zoning bylaw amendment. We do have a number of residential uh, zones in our zoning bylaw. So we have residential one, two, three, but we also have R1, residential one, A, B, and C. So each one of those um, has different lot sizes and lot requirements. Um, this is kind of old school planning. Um, it's very reflective of how Elmer was uh, initially laid out. Um, not saying that we're going to change it vastly, um, but as we are promoting opportunities for intensification and using our existing infrastructure as efficiently as possible, um, it is very likely that we are going to see these smaller lot sizes. Um, I, I do note that um, with smaller lot sizes typically come smaller houses just as a function of the lot coverage. Um, so that does provide an opportunity for people looking for a smaller home, uh, perhaps outside of um, somewhere uh, like our Sifton subdivision, um, or our, our condo development. So you do get a smaller lot, but typically a smaller house and, and that serves the community need as well. Thank you. Thank you, Christy. Are there any further questions for Christy concerning this report? Seeing none, all those in favor? And that's carried. The next report is plan 08-22. That report plan 08-22 entitled dedication of reserve block as a public highway block 13 11m 75 cottonwood subdivision be received for information and that council consider giving three readings to the bylaw 1122 being a bylaw to dedicate land as a public highway okay someone to move and someone to second councillor chapman and councillor ham and i'll turn it back over to you christy please Thank you, Your Worship, and through you to members of council, this report is fairly administrative in nature, um, but it does uh, illustrate some significant movement forward on phase two of the Cottonwood subdivision. So um, the block that we're referring to this evening is actually in the initial phase and acts as kind of a stopgap measure to uh, prohibit public access to that phase two land. So um, the phase two lands are actually getting quite close uh, to, to building permit issuance. We've already uh, been processing some permits for models, um, but in order for uh, the developers to proceed with uh, purchase and sale agreements, um, they need this reserve lifted. Um, so we're dedicating it as a public highway um, and then an enabling free access. So I've included um, a bylaw for council's consideration this evening. Okay, thank you, Christy. Are there any questions for Christy? Seeing none. Oh, sorry, uh, Councillor uh, Barber, did you have your hand up? Okay, go ahead. Uh, my apologies, Your Worship. I just like to uh, make a quick comment that uh, this uh, particular project has been gone going for upwards of 20 years, and if it wasn't for the uh, the perseverance of staff uh, and of this particular council, I think we'd probably still be looking at uh, nothing happening. So kudos to staff uh, and to the council for making this happen. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Barber. Are there any further comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? And that's carried. The next uh, report is Plan 09-22. That report, Plan 09-22, Planning Report, Exemption from Draft Plan Approval for Condominium, 85 Forest Street, be received by Council for Information and that council direct administration to advise Elkin County Council that the town supports the request for exemption from draft plan approval for the condominium process for the lands described as part of park lot 6, plan 145, parts 1, 2, and parts 7 to 10, 11R, 8159, known municipally as 85 Forest Street, as matters relating to the development have been addressed through the site plan approval process in a registered development agreement with the town of Elmer. Okay, someone to move and someone to second. Councillor Charlton and Councillor Osledge. And I'll turn this back over to Christy, please. Thank you, Your Worship, and through you. Again, this is another report that's generally administrative in nature. Um, this report pertains to lands known as 85 Forest Street. We've uh, been in discussion with it for, uh, again, uh, quite a while, um, but we've gotten to the point where construction of the underground servicing is underway. Um, we have a registered uh, site uh, plan agreement or a development agreement in place. Um, the landowner and developer are seeking to proceed uh, with a plan of condominium on these lands. 
Um, and because we have uh, no outstanding conditions that are not included within that development agreement, uh, we're satisfied as administration um, that it's acceptable to exempt them from the draft approval process. So in order to facilitate that exemption, uh, which is processed through county council under their authority, um, the, the, uh, a resolution from town council is required. So happy to answer any questions on this one. Thank you, Christy. Are there any questions for Christy? Councillor Charlton, go ahead. Uh, through your worship to Christy, uh, so all the hurdles that have been uh, jumped now and uh, they're able to carry on with their plan and, and go forward and, and finish this project. Is that correct? Go ahead, Christy. If I may, through you, uh, Mayor French to Councillor Charlton, uh, I am pleased to let you guys know that we uh, are in uh, we are just about ready to issue permits for the first uh, two blocks of townhouses uh, within this development. So um, the agreement is now fully registered um, and they are well underway with getting their services in place. Um, this should be the, the last time uh, we see this part of the development at the council table. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Christy. And this is another good news story because this has been an ongoing project for many, many years. So it's fantastic to see it getting to this point. So that's great. Um, is, are there any further questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor. And that's carried. The next report is CAO 20-22. That report CAO 2022 entitled parking options preliminary report be received for information and that council approve a budget amendment in the amount of $36,000 for 2022 towards the installation of a parking meter system in municipal lots one and two and further that council provide an exemption to the requirements of the town's procurement policy to allow the entrance of a contract with precise park link incorporated of Toronto for the provision of three pay and display parking meters. Okay, thank you, Josh. Someone to move and someone to second. Okay, so we're not getting any movers or seconders, Josh. So how do we move on with this? Uh, through your worship, in the absence of a mover or seconder um, on this, the, the motion would simply fail. Okay, I'm, I'm, I don't see any hands up. So I'm assuming then that it's um, this motion has failed. Yep, uh, with the call of that and with no mover and seconder, uh, there would be no discussion and the motion would fail. Okay, thank you. And so there, I guess it has failed. So we'll be moving on to the next report. And that's uh, fire. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry, Mayor French. Could we get a, a motion just to receive the report for information so I could provide council a brief update? Just, just to receive the report for information. Council, uh, wants to do that. So I would need someone to move in second if, the, if we want to approach it that way. Uh, Councillor Chapman and Councillor Barber. Okay, so it's it's uh, that, If I guess we should read the resolution though to make it clear. Uh, through through your worship, uh, just, just for clarity, I just wanted to confirm. So Councillor Chapman is moving that the report CAO 2022 entitled Parking Options Preliminary Report be received for information. And that's seconded by Councillor Barber. That's right. And that's why I wanted you to just read that again, just so we're all clear. Okay, I'll turn it over to you now, Andy. Thank you, uh, Mayor French. I, I just uh, wanted an opportunity just to speak because I, I did want to begin by thanking the BIA and their members. Uh, we were able to get an extension for a response from the potential vendor on, for a decision on this until tomorrow. Um, and the BIA was good enough to arrange a special meeting last week to allow for, for us to have a discussion. Uh, well, we didn't win them over. It was a really great dialogue and I appreciate their understanding around why the pay and display meters was brought forward due to the time sensitivity of the opportunity. Um, I've had a lot of parking conversations in my positions in Norfolk County and the, the city of Hamilton, and it's always an issue that garners attention and headlines. In Elmer, I wouldn't really term the issue uh, of parking as a particularly contentious one. Really, it's more of a situation where we have a shared goal of delivering the best for our community. We just have different thoughts and visions on how to get there. And I really appreciate the BIA members under staff's obligations to present an opportunity to council. However, disagreed with the, the proposed approach. 
Uh, very briefly, the, the issue relates to two paid parking lots, one behind Town Hall and the other behind Global City IDA, because that's where everybody recognizes it. Uh, the town really isn't recovering any meaningful revenue from all day parking as this process is uh, to attend City Hall and pay $5 in person. Uh, we felt the opportunity to purchase the three pay and display meters with Central Elgin represented a significant cost savings in terms of enjoying economies of scale. So if we did it on our own, it would cost much more. That's our belief. Uh, this also fits the general theory that there's no such thing as, as free parking. Essentially, all you have is taxpayers subsidizing capital costs for an asset that should generate revenues for future repair. So in principle, staff do think that it's best to have some funds in, in a reserve fund generated from revenues, uh, uh, specifically for the repaving and future maintenance of it. So it's going to be, uh, if we don't start creating that fund and doing that, it's going to be harder for future councils to actually maintain these lots. Um, so we think it's in everybody's interest. There are, however, a lot of other issues addressed in the report, such as looking at the historical free parking spots behind Town Hall, reviewing monthly and annual pass processes, reviewing enforcement, improving regulations, and we will be starting a dialogue with the Police Service Board, the Chamber, and the BIA on all those aspects in April. This report really represents a very small portion of a much larger issue, and we're going to continue to work on finding options for council, even if you just receive this report for information. And that was my comments I prepared before this meeting, uh, just so you know that I wasn't uh, anticipating that council would support it. I just wanted to thank the BIA and thank our partners and really highlight that I see this as a, a positive relationship going forward, and I think we're going to achieve something for, for the community even if it's not these pay and display meters. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Andy. Um, after Andy's explanation, are there any questions or comments before we vote on this? Okay, seeing none. Oh, sorry, did you want to comment, Councillor Osledge? Yes, you were. Read, uh, have uh, the clerk read the resolution over again. Okay, go. could you do that for us, please, Josh? Certainly, uh, through you, Your Worship, um, this is moved by Councillor Chapman and it's seconded by Councillor Barber that report CAO 2022 entitled Parking Options Preliminary Report be received for information. Okay, are there any further questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? And that's carried. Thank you. The next item up is report fire 03-22. That report fire 3-22 entitled Elmer Fire Department Dispatch Renewal Contract be received for information and that council approve the renewal contract for fire dispatching services from the town of Tilsonburg Fire and Rescue Services and further that council approve an exemption to the town's procurement policy to allow for the entering into an agreement for a dispatch agreement with the Town of Tilsonburg Fire and Rescue Services upon the condition that staff proceed to undertake a competitive procurement process upon the open market prior to substantial completion of the contract term. Okay, someone to move and someone to second. Councillor Chapman and Councillor Tarleton. And I'll turn this over to you, Chief McComb. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, good evening, Council. Um, so this uh, contract has been ongoing with the town of Tilsburg, and it's certainly not a reflection of, of, of the town of Elmer not being happy with their service. We've been in a contract with them since 2007. It automatically re re renewed to 2012. It was a, a blanket policy that covered all the municipalities together. The reason it's brought forward in front of council is, as you can see in my report, there is a change to, uh, to the price uh, of that business. And of course, that has to be approved by, by council. Uh, as any service or, or any provided, you know, that we've been involved with that, that period of time, I think it's important that we do take it to market value and make sure that we are paying, paying a, uh, a fair rate and it's, it is a fair market value. This is pretty standard in my research with uh, dispatch centers that are looking at the fire service to to uh, to pitch in to meet those uh, those goals of the next generation 911 it is quite a task so again no no way infringes on our uh, relationship with Tilsonburg they're doing a great job it's just our due diligence that we owe to uh, to make sure that the costing is is correct 
Uh, with that being said, if there's any questions from council, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Thank you, Orissa. Thank you, Chief McCone. Are there any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? And that's carried, thank you. The next report is FIRE 04-22. That report FIRE 04-22 entitled RFP, Award Combi Tool, be received for information. And that council accepts the proposal from Code 4 Fire and Rescue in the amount of $14,999 for the supply of one battery operated cutter spreader combination combi tool to the Town of Elmer Fire Department. Okay, someone to move and someone to second. Councillor Barber and Councillor Ham. And I'll turn this back over to you, Chief McComb. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, again, this is a, uh, as you see in my report, uh, in the fire service, we always like to have a, a backup plan to our initial response, our initial response to, uh, and we have to think of this as not only a vehicular accident, it could be industrial rescue as well, is our uh, gas powered uh, um, um, extrication tools that I'm sure Councillor Barber is quite, a, quite aware of. Uh, this is the next generation. They are cordless. Um, they uh, kind of, we, we chose this direction to use a combi tool. It cuts and it spreads as opposed to, to uh, spending this equivalent amount of money on two pieces of equipment. We feel that this one piece is a correct move and, and cost effective for the fire department to, uh, to increase our service and, uh, and, and last for, for many years to come. So again, if there's any questions, I'd be uh, able to answer those. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Chief McComb. Go ahead, Councillor Chapman. For you, Your Worship. So Chief McComb, um, what is the reasoning for choosing a battery operated as opposed to a gas operated? Well, that's a great question for you, Your Worship, if I may. Go um, ahead. This is the uh, next generation of, of equipment. Um, I mean, on the old days, uh, Councillor Chapman, I can go back and, and we used to have a pump and we used to pump and that's how we worked. And then the next generation was the gas supplied tools. This is the next generation of, of the tools, the next step for fire. You're not tied to a gas pack. A firefighter is able to take this tool, approach a scene, uh, independent of, of restrictions of an biblical of a uh, of a hydraulic system that is needed to power that and and it's important why I choose a different uh, a different means we already have a gas powered unit um, if that failed now we have a backup system so uh, you generally don't want to have a gas to a gas backup and, and again, the, uh, the cost was in line and it's a tool that would uh, serve the municipality well for years to come. And again, in industrial, we can't just think auto accident. We have to think about our industrial uh, community that we support as well for industrial accidents. It's a, it's a little bit easier to use. I hope that answers your question. You're on mute, Mayor. I, I thought I unmuted it. <laughs> it just makes it easier. Sorry, I'm doing that tonight, but I'm finding there's an echo. So that just be patient uh, with me. Thank you. Uh, go ahead, Councillor Chapman. Do you have a follow up question? Yes, your wish. Yes. Chief, Chief McCone again. Um, I, I just because I, I don't know and I want to know. Um, the back the battery backup so this is a like a high power battery that is rechargeable and uh, it's just in my mind i'm thinking that battery isn't always as powerful as gas so that is why i'm thinking the way that i am so um is it as powerful is it is it is it um value for its money to give you the results that you need. Again, through your worship, if I may. Go ahead. Uh, another great question, Councillor. Uh, fantastic question. So this is the new generation, of course, lithium batteries, the new generation of batteries that are powering cars and automobiles. Um, in our RFP, we made it very clear of the power that we needed in this tool to be consistent with our hydraulic tools. And in most cases, it exceeded that expectation. 
in the RFP, you'll notice we did we did uh, uh, put provisions in there for charging and a spare battery. So the unit actually comes with two batteries. That from yeah, from my experience, from uh, from the demonstrations that the crews have taken on this, uh, depending on the on the um, you know the use of the machine, it could do five cars without without having to change a battery and boom we have a backup battery right there you simply clip it out clip it back in proceed again and both of them are in a charging unit at the station so fantastic questions thank you thank you thank you for your answer I, i'm really pleased with that i i um that was my concern so thank you thank you Councillor barber go ahead uh, thank you, Worship. Uh, to the chief, uh, the uh, quotations were not clear um, to a certain degree. Uh, were the quotes for the same make and model of unit, or were there uh, different uh, different manufacturers involved? Uh, because you picked the uh, second most expensive. Could you clarify that, please? Absolutely, through through the mayor. Go ahead. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, yes, these are all different models. The supplier is listed as a privacy uh, to their models uh, of, of the equipment that was used. Uh, they had to meet what was in the RFP. Um, they were invited to demonstrate each tool. The tools are completely different. Um, I guess there's always a good, better, best in in, in every uh, every uh, item that we we purchase through the through the department and again we try to strive to be uh, cost efficient and cost effective and uh, through the uh, through the process of demonstration um, that was the tool that was recommended by the uh, by the staff here thanks Chief. thank you sir are there any further questions or comments okay seeing none all those in favor and that's carried. Thank you. The next item up is report OPNS 03-22. That report OPNS 03-22 entitled sidewalk extension, Spruce Street request be received for information and that the staff be directed to include a sidewalk expansion program in the draft 2023 capital budget for council's consideration and that staff be directed to undertake in consultation with the public a sidewalk expansion master plan, including recommendations for prioritized capital expansions, expansion schedule, and funding recommendations for the council's consideration. Okay, someone to move and someone to second. Councillor Chapman and Councillor Tarleton, and I'll turn this over to you, Rob. Uh, good evening, Your Worship and, and uh, members of Council. As you'll uh, recall, uh, direction was given to staff to review uh, and report back on the requests that we received from uh, Mrs. Uh, Preisinger to expand uh, the sidewalk uh, network. Um, as you'll likely have noticed from my report, it's not a simple, can operations put it in and how much is it going to cost? Um, after having reviewed the request, I think it's probably prudent to um, review some things with council uh, before you uh, you make your uh, decision going going forward. Um, uh, firstly, I'd like to to, to mention that it, it would appear that the standalone uh, capital sidewalk budget has been a victim of some point in the past of the fiscal challenges that many municipalities feel. Outside of road reconstruction, we don't have a standalone. A sidewalk uh, expansion budget. We have an operational budget to deal with repairs, and uh, the expansion is not not in your budget. So uh, that's the uh, the first thing. Um, second thing I want to point out is you'll notice from the report that I don't think uh, there's a department or a staff member here that doesn't recognize the benefit of sidewalks. Um, and I, I'm sure if I asked Christy, she could expand exponentially on the importance of healthy communities and active transportation. And not just simply transportation. A, a lot of times, our sidewalk are simply our largest recreational facilities. People don't have to go anywhere; uh, they'll simply go out at night for a walk. So, I want to first say that we recognize the importance of uh, the sidewalk network, and we're all in favor of doing uh, sidewalk uh, network, network expansions. expansions. Um, 
there's just, there's just probably there's one probably significant one issue that um, I feel probably should be uh, identified to council. Staff have had other requests for uh, sidewalk expansion. And we've simply said, no, it's not in the budget or it doesn't quite meet the policy or we haven't had it addressed it yet. So uh, very likely council could, as early as next week, get a very similar request for a, a sidewalk network somewhere else. Um, and I think that uh, consistency um, in how you deal with these requests are are uh, are important. You'd be hard pressed to tell the next person that uh, their their situation uh, is is a lot different than the situation on on Spruce Street. So I think you'd, the decision you make tonight, you have to carry through with a future request um, or justify your action, why you took action to uh, move on Spruce Street and not on another sidewalk. So in my mind, that's uh, one of the most challenging issues of, of this request. Um, so I think the prudent course of action would be to get a, a priority list together, a master plan or a priority list together, where we could get some public input and identify where is the best spot to start. Is it Spruce Street or is it somewhere else? Um, and I think having a master plan uh, with all of the years put on there, where we're headed next, identifying the street, I think in the long term, uh, not just takes action on uh, Spruce Street, but future councils will be hard pressed to cut something like that out. So not are you dealing with Spruce Street, but you're actually setting up um, the whole town, uh, town's program moving forward. And I think that's a great forward course of action. It allows us to sort of get organized. It's perfect timing in that the council has a master parks and sidewalk plan uh, on the go for this year. This would dovetail nicely into that. We could figure out where the linkages should be. We're going out to engage the public on where we should go in the meantime. And it would also give us some time uh, to get organized. So I think that would be the prudent uh, course of action. I would also just uh, remind council that when we retrofit sidewalks into an existing neighborhood, you might have heard from people that want the sidewalks. You probably haven't heard from anybody that doesn't want it, or more likely you're hearing from people that completely want the sidewalk, but feel, can't understand why it should be on the other side of the street. So at some point, um, there's gonna be unhappy people as well. I think we should just take the time and plan to put it in. You can't put in a curb face sidewalk because the sidewalk plow and the snow plow fight back and forth for that space. So we want to move that sidewalk away from the traveled portion. I've had small kids. I never liked walking my small kids are grown now, but I never liked walking right next to traffic. You don't want to have a boulevard that's only a meter wide. Those become orphaned. They don't get looked after like they're part of the lawn. So you kind of want enough of a boulevard that it gets looked after by the landowner. The farther we creep that um, sidewalk away from the curb, the more likely we're bisecting somebody's driveway. There might be now a car on the back side of a sidewalk. There's a lot of those issues and you're hearing from the people that want the sidewalk, but I think we need time to address those as we retrofit sidewalks into existing neighborhoods, uh, whether which side of the street it's gonna be on or other trees gonna be uh, affected. There's always, there's always collateral damage, if you will, uh, to get these sidewalks in. So I just wanted to mention that as well. And with that, Your Worship, I'll, I'll turn it back to you. Okay, thank you, Rob. Are there any questions for Rob? Councillor Oslatch, go ahead. Uh, yes, Your Worship. Uh, I glad you, you're updating the master plan for sidewalks, and in the town of Elmer, I don't think it has been updated since since 2006. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but the people on Spruce Street um, have issued letters, and uh, I would recommend them to do uh, take up a petition and submit it to council or to submit it to the town. So it, it, it could be included in the 2023 capital budget. That's my suggestion. Okay, thank you, Councillor Oslatch. Uh, Councillor Tarleton and then Councillor Chapman. Uh, through your worship to uh, Rob, uh, beware of the power of one. Uh, a number of years ago, there was a little girl that went to Davenport School. Her name was Heather Maltby, and there was no um, sidewalk, on, mostly down Rutherford. 
And so, uh, and the town wasn't going to do it. But this little girl got a petition and um, I got a lot of signatures and it was turned down once and she went back to council for the second time and uh, she either gave them a real sweet uh, spiel or something, but uh, there ended up being a sidewalk put down on Rutherford Ave. So beware. Thank you. Councillor Chapman and then Councillor Barber. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, to Rob, Rob, I, I think your plan is an awesome idea. If, if to move forward without a plan, with without looking at everything, I think is a mistake. Yes, I understand why Spur Street needs a sidewalk. I understand that there's possibly a new subdivision going in that area, but I agree that there are other areas that need sidewalks as well. And I think that coming up with a plan and, and putting something in place so that we can say, yes, we know you need a sidewalk. This is when we plan to put that sidewalk in and having a budget for sidewalks. I don't understand why in the past it was only for upkeep of the sidewalks and there wasn't already a sidewalk plan. So I very much agree with your idea of, of a plan for this. Thank you, Councillor Chapman. Councillor Barber, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, echoing uh, Councillor Chapman's uh, comments, we need a long range plan. We need long range budgeting. To do else uh, is just not fair to the whole municipality. Uh, if Street, uh, Spruce Street were chosen at this particular time as the project of choice, uh, there would be a hue and cry if those mature uh, uh, trees that are on the north side uh, were eliminated in uh, uh, the hope of getting a sidewalk. And that would be the side of the road that would normally be chosen. Um, long range planning, long range budgeting, so that we know what's down the pipe and uh, how we're gonna pay for it. Just makes sense. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Barber. Are there any further comments or questions concerning this report? Seeing none, all those in favor? And that's carried, thank you. And thank you, Rob. Uh, the next report is OPNS 04-22. That report OPNS 04-22 entitled 2021, apologies, 2020, yep, 2021 Wastewater Treatment Lagoons Annual Report be received as information. Okay, someone to move and someone to second. Councillor Chapman and Councillor Oslatch. And I'll turn it back over to you, Rob. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I'll be brief. It's a fairly standard, typical report. You'll see from a report that uh, these types of systems are certainly not immune from uh, some challenges and some environmental uh, impacts. Uh, nothing that I can see that uh, I would specifically warrant Im you know, immediate action or anything like that. I would like to bring Council's attention to um, page 13 of the attachment and it would be on chart number 12. I just scroll there. <clears throat> so if you'll see the grade area of uh, the flow through the intermittent sand filters, you'll notice uh, the year before uh, we've got some great flow, May, June, July, August, and then you can see September and October were just about shutting down. And if council recall, we had some really bad issues with the sand filters operating. We, we, by the time we hit September last year, we had standing water on the filters. So you put water onto your filters and it percolates down through, but we were seeing standing water for a couple of weeks. You'll recall that the, the council took action and we swapped out the sand, did a remove and a replace. And you can see uh, that we got all the way through to the finish line. We're still getting the high volume uh, on the blue lines right through September, October and November. So in my mind, if we hadn't have taken action to replace those sand filters, we sort of saw them fail, you know, the year before in September. I think you would continue to start to see them fail earlier and earlier in the through the process as we move forward. So I'm 
I want to give kudos to council for taking action and, and getting the sand out of there and making sure that we didn't take it right down to the very last minute or in a crisis position with those sand filters because they're they're critical to that operation. And uh, with that, I turn it back to you, Your Worship. Okay, thank you, Rob. Are there any questions for Rob uh, concerning this report? Uh, go ahead, Councillor Charlton. Uh, I heard a comment um, recently um, about Springfield expanding, and uh, apparently our contract with Malahide, we can only take a, a couple of hundred more houses, um, and then our capacity is going to be um, overwhelmed. Uh, I guess there's still uh, room there to expand. I don't know just how that would work, um, but I uh, I don't want to uh, generate any ill feelings with with Malahide Township uh, over this, um, uh, because uh, the it, it it is in uh, Malahide Township, I believe the sewage lagoons. That's not the property of the town of Elmer, is it? So. Uh, uh, anyway, through, just a concern I have. Thank you. Certainly, uh, through through you, Your Worship, there's a, a long-standing agreement with the town that they purchased a, a specific volume of allocation. Uh, I believe it's 440 cubic meters uh, per day, and uh, that is ab that allocation we're obligated to provide them. If I if I look back, I think they're probably three quarters of their allocation. Uh, and that's through a long-standing agreement. Okay, thank you. Are, are there any further questions or comments? Um, I have a question and it's um, I, just to elaborate on what Councillor Charlton asked. If I'm not mistaken, I know that the lagoons are in Malahide Township, but doesn't Elmer actually own the land that the lagoons sit on? So that is our land that we purchased. Am I correct? Andy? Mayor Fresh, uh, yeah, and in similar logic, uh, Malahide has a municipal office in Elmer. Right, Same so thing. we own the land. It, yeah. it's, it definitely is in, ta in the township, but we certainly do own that land. Just for clarification, yeah. Councillor Charlton, I was curious too. Thanks for bringing that up. Are there any further questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? And that's carried. The next item up is OPNS 05-22. That report OPNS 05-22 entitled Elmer Water Distribution System Annual and Summary Reports be received for information and that the council receives the annual summary report for the Elmer Distribution System for the year 2021 as required by Ontario Regulation 17003 Schedule 22. And further, that the Council receives the Elmer Distribution System Annual Report for the year 2021 as required by Ontario Regulation 17003, Section 11. Thank you, Josh. Someone to move and someone to second. Councillor Barber and Councillor Ham. Uh, Rob, are you taking this one or is Connor here this evening? Uh, through your worship, Mr. Bailey sends his regrets this evening. Okay. Did, did you want to just give us a bit more information about this report, Rob? Uh, certainly, just to be brief, uh, Council will have seen this report. There's a regulatory obligation for us to get this to you, uh, I believe, prior to March 1st. So you will have seen this in your inbox uh, if, if it looks familiar to you. Uh, there's no um, non-compliance, there's non-conformance. All the flows look uh, uh, very standard. Nothing uh, out of scope or unusual in this report. Okay. Thank you, Rob. Are there any questions from council? Seeing none, all those in favor? And that's carried, thank you. New business and matters of urgency? Seeing none. Uh, bylaws, three readings. That council approves and gives three readings to the bylaw 1022, being a bylaw to amend the bylaw 5799, being the zoning bylaw for the town of Elmer, and bylaw 1122 being a bylaw to dedicate certain lands within the town of Elmer as a part of a public highway. Josh, I have a question for you before we proceed with this. Bylaw 10-22, 
Is that the one concerning uh, 196 Sydenham Street West? Okay. So I guess we're okay with that one. I just wanted to double check with you on that one. Okay, Josh? Yep. Yeah, that's correct, Your Worship. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that was the right one. Okay, um, someone to move and someone to second. Councillor Chapman and seconded by Councillor Hamp. Are there any questions or comments? Did you have a comment, Councillor Charlton? Uh, yes, Your Worship. Uh, I was uh, reading it and uh, uh, on page 296, um, where it says purpose and effect, um, no, number two, uh, it's it, uh, made mention that there were no no letters or correspondence or whatever, but there there were. There was a phone conversation and there was a letter submitted. So I just thought that that should be noted. Um, uh, otherwise, it, it means nothing. And and people are showing an interest in what's going on in their community. And I don't think they, you know, it should be swept under the rug. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Josh, did you want to answer that? Uh, certainly, uh, through your worship and to Councillor Charlton, thank you for the uh, for the notation on that. Uh, often when we're publishing agendas, um, there is correspondence that comes in, you know, on the day of that bylaws are prepared or shortly thereafter. So I suspect that that's, uh, that's what would have happened. But I, I can assure Council that um, we'll ensure that that section uh, does reflect the correspondence that was received and uh, we'll ensure that it's uh, it's included with the final version of the bylaw that's uh, filed and permanently retained. Okay, thank you. Are there any further questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? And that's carried, thank you. Inquiries by members? Councillor Oslatch? Yes, Your Worship. In 2020, in July, we instituted the state of emergency in Elmer, and we brought a mask by lion. As uh, I understand, uh, 2021 in December 31st, the mask uh, bylaw was removed for the town of Elmer, but we're under the pro provincial mask uh, bylaw, and that is being removed on Monday. Uh, I have a question. Basically, is a state of emergency is still in effect in Elmer? Okay, Andy, could you answer that for Councillor Oslatch, please? Through you, uh, Mayor French, uh, that's a good question. Uh, so uh, we passed a resolution in August tying our state of emergency to the counties or the provincial one. Uh, the province has indicated that they're likely to let all mandates expire on April 27th, which I think means that all, um, all emergency will be over by that point. Um, the county is likely going to continue the emergency until at least mid-April. They do have a uh, long-term care home, so they do want to keep a higher level uh, with the emergency because of that. Um, and uh, I imagine that will be kind of when we do, but uh, certainly the mask mandates, um, I've been in discussions with the other CAOs uh, just this morning about it, and everybody is kind of encouraging uh, their staff to feel comfortable wearing a mask in the office if they want, but it's going to be optional on Monday. And we will continue to do the um, uh, reporting uh, for staff every day to do the um, checklist to make sure that we don't have people who are ill coming into the office because uh, we did have a case with that checklist uh, where it did identify somebody who was positive with COVID. So it has been a useful tool for us and we are committed to continuing to uh, listen to the medical officer of health and uh, implement best practices to keep our staff safe. Thank you, Andy. Okay, are there any further inquiries by members? Seeing none. Um, statements and committee reports. Councillor Barber, go ahead. You're on mute, uh, Councillor Barber. My apologies. Uh, from the Elgin area primary water system, that's the uh, the authority that um, uses the water plant on Dexter Line 
to supply the majority of um, Elgin County, St. Thomas, um, and half of the city of London with their uh, water uh, needs. Uh, their last uh, two quarters, they, uh, they report a, um, uh, no areas of concern or no notes of concern and 100% compliance. Uh, recently had a, uh, an audit done from an outside agency of the policy and procedures and um, I'll just take a moment of council's time, if I can, <clears throat> with the auditor's report. And it says, during the EMS uh, audit, which is uh, Elgin Middlesex uh, uh, system audit, the external auditors specifically provided positive comments about the status and success of the Elgin area primary water supply system management system. The auditor confirmed to staff during the closing meeting that based on their national experience, the EAPWSS has successfully implemented some of the best management systems they have ever, ever seen, not just within the drinking water industry, but across all industries. Specifically noted was the cooperative relationship between the, uh, the system and its operating authority and the proactive approach to identifying improvement projects. Uh, kudos to staff uh, for making those things happen. Second report is from the Elgin Secondary Water System. That's the system that supplies uh, water through uh, a large pipeline along Highway 3. So it covers uh, parts of uh, Central Elgin and uh, parts of Malide and the town of Elmer. And that's also where Springfield would get their water uh, supply system tapping off ours. Uh, anyway, the last quarter, their uh, compliance ratio was also at 100% and operating within budget. Third thing I'd like to mention is that the Huron Area Water Supply System, which is the sister uh, organization of the water systems within this uh, community, uh, supplies the top half of uh, the City of London and the areas toward uh, Lake Huron. Elegant draws from uh, Lake Erie and the Huron Board uh, draws from Lake, uh, Lake Huron. They were successful after many years of negotiation in working out an agreement with the United First Nations to eventually and hopefully supply water to the uh, Oneida uh, area. Uh, it will be provided through the Huron side, although because primarily because there is a regulation in Ontario that you can draw water from one board and discharge it into another. In other words, if you draw from Lake Huron, it has to flow back into Lake Huron area. And um, the drainage is to the north in that particular area. So um, it's, it's good for the First Nations. It's good for the uh, for the water board and the people of the area. Uh, it's all dependent on the federal government stepping up to the plate and paying their fair share of the uh, of the cost. Uh, thank you for those reports. Councillor Barber, excellent reports, and thank you for sharing that with council. Are there any further statements or committee reports this evening? Okay, seeing none. There's no report of the mayor, so the next um, item is the notice of motion from Councillor Oslatch. So we're all aware of it, so it will be discussed at our next regular meeting. And uh, the next item up is meeting closed to the public and the resolution, please, Josh. The council moves into a meeting closed to the public at 8.18 p.m to discuss the following matters. Item 15.1 being a training session regarding the Planning Act, being closed to the public pursuant to section 239, 3.1 A and B of the Municipal Act 2001 as amended, as the following conditions are both satisfied. So those conditions are, one, the meeting is held for the purpose of educating or training the members of council, and two, at the meeting, no member of council discusses or otherwise deals with any matter in a way that materially advances the business or decision-making of the council, local board, or committee. And item 15.2, Chief Administrative Officer memo respecting the CAO annual performance review. And this is closed to the public pursuant to section 239.2D of the Municipal Act as the amended 
apologies as amended as the subject matter pertains to labor relations or employee negotiations. Okay, thank you, Josh. Someone to move and someone to second. Councillor Chapman and Councillor Charlton. Are there any questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? And that's carried.